Hi guys, PJ here. Today I'm working on a 2018 Volkswagen Charan and I'm going to be showing you how to fit a dash cam. This one's particularly the next base one but it should cover most of them. Ideal things to have are the things I have in front of me for when you're doing this sort of job. Some long nose pliers because the fuses can be quite recessed and hard to pull out even with the little plastic gizmo that the vehicle manufacturer supplies. A plastic leverage tool such as a Bojo tool like this one. These are very handy for prising bits of trim and stuff like that that won't damage the edge of any plastic surfaces or anything. If you use a screwdriver, obviously you are going to cause damage to your vehicle, so don't do it. Go and get yourself a one pound wonder like this. Any old plastic scraper will do, as long as it's you know firm but malleable, yeah? So it just bends a little bit. You can get these off eBay or Amazon, they're about a pound for a pack of three, roughly. Roll of electrical tape, just to tidy things up at the end of the job. A multimeter for testing your fuses in the fuse box or you could use one of those little like screwdrivers with a bulb in the end of them where you just tap the end of it and it lights up if it's powered because we're going to be looking for an ignition switched fuse on an accessory circuit to power the camera so the camera goes on and off with the ignition also ideally a fitting kit now these again are available eBay Amazon that type of place most car shops in the fitting kit you will get if you can see here A replacement power cable which is mini USB on one end and just literally bare wires so an earth wire and a power wire on the other. A fuse spur, now this is the key ingredient in my opinion to make life very easy for yourself. A fuse spur is one of these. They come in normal size, mini blade size which is what this is and is what the Volkswagen Charan uses and also micro size. There you go bullet connector on the end and all these are they're a little bit like your home uh, outlet sockets where it sort of doubles up the, the socket so you take the fuse out you plug this in and it makes a double socket so the fuse that's already fitted which is a two or three amp normally uh, that runs your camera and the one here is to put the fuse in that you've removed from your fuse box so it just piggybacks off it without doing any soldering or any wire splicing nice and easy if you're on a lease vehicle it also avoids um, voiding the warranty on the vehicle because obviously you don't want to be permanently altering the vehicle uh, other than that, ideal thing to have is a handful of cable ties, and that's just to bulk the wire up where it goes across where your headlining is. So I've just switched to headlining. So we're tucking the cable up behind here. You can normally put your fingers up here and just pull it down. Be careful with it. Don't go at it like a bullet to gate because it, it is like a fibre cardboard substance. Just be very careful. Just pull it down a little bit, tuck your cable up. And all I do is wrap the cable tie around it like so. Just to bulk the cable up so it'll sit there. You don't want to be it in a big pothole and then all of a sudden the cable come dangling down in front of your view. So it's just to help it sit there so it doesn't fall down again. You want about three, so one in the corner here, one in the middle, and then one sort of here, the other side where we're going with it. So tuck your cable all the way along, around the little plastic mirror housing. This is quite an annoying bit to get around, but it is possible. You just sort of pull at it and carefully click it under. All the way along until you get to the post here. Now behind here is an airbag, so I'm quickly just going to say, by following this video guide, I'm held in no way liable or responsible for any damage to your vehicle or injury to yourself. If you are slightly worried even, please contact a professional, pay them to do the job, they're insured to work on your vehicle. Okay, with that out of the way, all you've got to do is prise the edge of it. You can use your plastic pry thing if you want. Just pull it a little bit and tuck your cable down the edge. Yeah. So there's my cable, look. Now you're not going over the airbag, the airbag starts from sort of here downwards, yeah? You're going right across the top here, right around the rim, so it's just going to sit high up, out the way of the airbag. I mean, believe me, if an airbag's deployed, it'll soon move a bit of cable out of the way. I've test deployed them in the past and uh, there's not a lot of standing in the way, so you haven't got to stress too much. But your airbag's here, so keep it up here out of the way, and then run it down. You can pull it across all the way down, look, until you get to the end of the dashboard. Right, so we're outside now, and this is the end of the dashboard, it's a right-hand drive vehicle. And all we're going to do is pop this panel off with your plastic leverage tool. Don't use a screwdriver, it will damage it. So on clips, there you go, take that away, move that out of the way. We're going to be using one of these bolts here as an earthing point for the black wire. Then we're going to remove the fuse box cover, which is located right here. Don't pull at it, it's on a slider, so slide it left. And down. Do not tug at it, you will break the clip. They're very fragile. I know loads of people that have broken these in the past. And then pull down. There's your clip. Okay? Gives you access to 
your fuse box. So what we're going to do now is remove this 13mm bolt and put the black wire behind it on a like a circle uh, clamp. Yeah, I'll show you when it's done. Now when you're taking this off, don't worry, your dashboard's not going to move. There's plenty of other bolts holding it in place. You're only removing the one, just put an earth wire behind it. If you don't want to remove it, if you feel uncomfortable with it, you could get another nut that's threaded exactly the same and uh, leave this one on and add it over the top. So like a sandwich effect, it's not going to do any, any harm at all. So just carry on and undo this bolt. They're quite big and long. There we are, the nut's been removed. Now what I normally do is get a, a, a reasonable sized washer just to cover over it there. And then get your hoop that you've got on the end of your black wire. Slide that over, pop your nut back on. And that'll be a really nice earthing point, really secure, nice and strong. Just nip it back up again, nice and tight, and you can move on to your power. Okay, so to test your fuses, all you got to do is get your meter. We're showing zero voltage there. And we're going to test either F29, which is the 12 volt socket, so that lighter socket just there, the yellow one, 20 amp. Um, or if you wanted to use mini blade fuse, like I originally said, and get a better camera view there for you, you go for F. 14, I believe it is, which is like a trailer socket, reading zero voltage there, and we just test that one, also zero voltage. When we put the ignition on, it will light up, showing you that it's a 12 volt switched ignition source, which this particular one is. I'll show you that. So we've got ignition on, touch top of the probe there, on the yellow fuse, and there you go, 12 volt switched. So we're going to go with this one. This is a full-size blade fuse, so you are going to need the bigger fuse spur, like so. That larger one there, instead of using the, the trailer socket there. You can do that if you're using a mini blade fuse, it's no big deal. But I'm going to go for the 12-volt uh, the scrap light socket on this particular one. Nice and easy to get to. And there we go. Plugged in, power cable goes up and out the other side there. We can tidy all this cabling up now, stash it behind here nice and securely and tidy up anything here. I've actually taped it around the main loom. Don't use any fuse that's for ABS, airbag or anything like that. Always use an accessory fuse and bear in mind your fuse box out, you know, your diagram may be completely different depending on year, spec, model, what country it's for, etc. So make sure you test your fuses yourself in the way that I've shown you. But that's the way I'm doing this particular one, works nicely. I'm just going to tidy everything up there and give the camera a test. Everything all nicely tidied up and hidden out of the way. We're now going to test the camera before we put the cover back on and before we replace the fuse box lid. Right, coming to the camera itself, just a, a very quick thing. More than likely the salesman's gone over this with you where you bought it from or you've you know, looked into the description on the unit before you bought it online. Ideally, a lot of them come with two mounts, a suction mount and a 3M sticky pad mount. Now this matters depending where you're going to put the camera. If your window screen has got a large black area around the mirror, such as this, yeah, what you've got to do is actually rub it. If it's smooth glass texture, like literally you can't feel it at all, you're fine to use the sticky, sorry, the suction mount, the suction cup mount is fine. If, however, it's raised like a textured surface, as if it's painted, you're going to need to use the sticky 3M mount. If you haven't got a sticky 3M mount, you're going to have to move your camera further away on a normal piece of glass yeah and that's not ideal because if we go to the side where I'm putting this I ideally want the camera sort of here right on the edge so it clears the edge of the mirror here but doesn't sit in the middle of the passenger view okay so smooth glass texture sticky pad mount uh, no problem sorry smooth glass texture suction cup mount textured rough feeling 3m sticky mount okay but like I say, double check with your supplier on that particular one. Next up, your memory card. Uh, there's different specs memory card depending on the camera you've bought. If you've bought a 4K camera that records in 4K, you're going to need a high speed memory card. Okay. If you bought a normal memory card that's not high speed, it won't work with it. This camera's not 4K. This is a 1440p, in other words, 2K. And this would be fine with a normal speed memory card. So will a 1080p, 720p. The higher the resolution, the clearer something like a num plate would be when you zoom in from a distance. So if obviously if the police or the assurance assessors take your memory card after an accident, they'll try and zoom in on a reg plate to identify what's happened if somebody's drove off. And the higher the resolution, the easier it is. 
generally speaking 1080p is good enough for everything 4k is a little bit overkill to be honest with you i mean it's it's not really needed it really isn't but at night time or dusk that's when your resolution is is best so 1080p 1440p good good protocol right let's get this on the windscreen and make sure it works so sucker mounted because this is a smooth glass texture power cable in just going to turn the ignition on normally it takes a second or two from to energize up battery backup's flat on it there we go little charge indicator there in the corner i don't know if you saw that wiggly line there we go just showing it's charging so that is it what you gotta do is put your end cap back on just give it a whack and then run your finger down it to get the rubber trim back over the edging of it there nice and easy a bit of a shove occasionally just to seat it you want it to look factory fitted basically there we go fuse box cover back on again which shoves up and lock done and guys that is how you fit a dash cam on a 2018 Sharan if you've got any questions at all please pop them in the comments below I will do my very best to answer them quickly just bear in mind I am inundated with uh, various vehicle questions uh, pretty much every day so I will get back to you as soon as possible normally the same day can be up to three days if I've got a backlog thanks for watching bye for now